with interventional radiology, just a quick readout to discuss uh, the things that I'm thinking about when we're doing a percutaneous biopsy. The case I have pulled up is a, a case of us doing a percutaneous biopsy of a lung nodule. Um, but these are some things will be specific to lung biopsy and others just in general percutaneous biopsy. So um, we look at our diagnostic imaging prior to to make sure that we have a safe access uh, percutaneously to biopsy um, whatever mass or lesion is in question. Uh, there's not a lot of areas that IR can't get to. I'll say we're not always the best suited to get things which are in the central mesentery uh, because a lot of times there's bowel in the way and that might require a, a surgical biopsy by our surgical colleagues. Um, typically, if there's a pancreatic mass, our GI colleagues can get to it with an EUS um, with less morbidity than we can percutaneously. Um, and sometimes things are just you know surrounded by colon or bowel or vessels which we can't get to. Uh, so those are the things I'm thinking about when people ask me if we can do a percutaneous biopsy. In this specific case, uh, it's a lung biopsy of a right lower lobe um, mass, which I think is very well suited for percutaneous biopsy. Within the lungs, the areas that we as interventional radiologists will somewhat uh, hesitate to biopsy is really anything centrally, uh, obviously near the the hilum of the lung, that's a lot of vasculature that we would rather not puncture through. Also large uh, airways, which we'd rather not puncture through at risk of causing a durable bron bronchopleural fistula. In those cases, when people have hilar masses, I'll generally see if there's any other lesion that we could biopsy, maybe a lymph node. Uh, maybe it's something that uh, pulmonology could get a uh, FNA of bronch uh, during a bronchoscopy. Um, so those are things that we think about. But in this specific case, uh, like I said, it's good for percutaneous biopsy. So the rules that we live by for lung biopsies are, number one, we want to obviously get diagnostic sample. Two, we only want to puncture the pleura once. Uh, that will decrease the risk of us having a post-procedural pneumothorax. Uh, and in keeping with that rule, we don't want to cross fissures because that's you know, enveloped in pleura, so that would be multiple pleural sticks. Um, so when possible, avoid that. And then three, we want to kind of want to take the shortest path possible. Obviously, if there was a mass here, we'd rather come anteriorly than coming lateral, just because there's less lung to puncture through, less risk of causing uh, pneumothorax or potentially bleeding. Uh, and then obviously ribs are something that we have to contend with always when we're dealing with um, puncturing anything in the thorax. And remember the old adage that it's safe to go over ribs but not under ribs. So the neurovascular bundle lives directly underneath each rib. If you go over, uh, you will avoid that and significantly decrease your risk of bleeding. Uh, also, sometimes it's nice to position the patient in such a way that we're going to decrease our risk of pneumothorax. So if we have them affected side down, that lung gets slightly less um, ventilation just by mechanics. Uh, so if those airways are a little bit more compressed and a little less air in the lung, there's less of a chance of us causing pneumothorax. Um, and obviously we still maintain our window for biopsy. Uh, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, I typically, you know, intermittently fluoro um, to make sure we're on track. Once I get near the lung, I make a nice long advancement so that we're not right on the edge of the lung, potentially lacerating the lung. And then um, I take a picture of the biopsy needle actually within the lesion when I can, uh, just to prove if for some reason we get a non-diagnostic sample that my needle was in. A good position. So uh, this one turned out great. This is maybe not the most exciting thing we do in interventional radiology, but obviously it's something that helps patients day in and day out. So I guess we'll continue doing it.